Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Um, this morning we'll be looking at so many very, very important issues. It's Midweek Frenzy. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. The petroleum industry has always been bedeviled by a lot of problems, including shortages and price hike. But the Independent Mar Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria has said that Dangote Refinery will address supply shortages and price hike. As the world prepares to celebrate uh, World Menstrual Hygiene Day on the 28th of May, Underprivileged Nigerian girls struggle as uh, our topic for today. We'll be looking at World Menstrual Hygiene Day and how it affects the average Nigerian child. We'll also have uh, headlines from the press and we're hoping to see what the headlines are today from the national dailies. Good morning once again and thanks for joining us on uh, The Breakfast. And like I said, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's so good to be here. I've been away for a, a little while, but um, we thank God for small mercies. And uh, right now we thank God especially for uh, the traffic situation in Lagos, especially on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway access. And we're also uh, happy that the construction that was going on around the Korodu exit is now done with and a lot of people are moving freely on the road. A lot of things um, just spiral into some other things that we do not even like. The fact that the Lagos Ibadan Expressway has been fixed, uh, as for now at least it has been fixed because we know that a lot of people have even said that that axis of the road has been a political campaign uh, uh, thing for a very, very long time. So who knows if there's another campaign that is going to come up in four years, whether that will also be an issue and something will be done on that axis again and cause hardship for the people because every year, every election circle, we also we always hear about Lagos Ibadan Expressway. We do hope that the fixing this time around has or is going to last for a very, very long time and we don't have to uh, go through all the pain that we've been going through. And because of that, traffic, even as far as Benin, as far as Ore, as far as so many other places, uh, was very good. At least I traveled by road yesterday and uh, it was so, so surprising that we could get to where we got to at the time that we got to uh, those places. So we like that so much. Let it continue that way. Federal government, state government, local government, Everybody who is supposed to be in charge should also um, make sure that they keep uh, doing what they're supposed to do and make sure that we uh, are the better for it. Because we are the people who put people in government, so we should not suffer uh, for uh, the things that could be done very easily. Okay, we also are hoping that uh, a lot will be done as well to make sure that the water transportation within Lagos will be uh, a thing of joy for all of us because it will be available for everybody that needs to access it. And also the trains and the electric cars, they are coming up. So let us at least uh, have access to all those things and let the congestion in Lagos go away. We need that to go away so that we don't have to be coming so early to work when you have to resume at 8 o'clock, you have to be here at 5 o'clock because you're trying to beat traffic. I mean, it will mean that the mental health of everybody will be tested because we need to sleep for so little a time and then wake up so early, come into the hustle and bustle that Lagos is known for and then go back in the same spirit and we have no time to rest at all. So it's not really good. Maybe uh, uh, employers of labor should consider uh, giving like three months uh, <laughs> leave for everybody who works in Lagos or something like that. 
but we really do not know how this is going to end. We do hope that the next administration that is coming up, even though, like for the case of Lagos, he is handing over to himself, and that is, I'm talking about Sonwolu, we do hope that the things that were planned uh, for the last tenor that were not completed will be completed now, and the innovations that will come for this uh, in this tenor will be uh, something that we'll be very, very happy about. The themes agenda, according to this government, has at its for transportation. Let us begin to see these translated into action, uh, not just on paper and what we hope to achieve. Dreams sometimes should come to reality. And that is what we're looking for. Okay, so today we'll be looking at a lot of things, but uh, we already know that some of the things that are happening, we are going to con discuss uh, the refinery uh, uh, that Dangote uh, has built and it has been launched. Okay, before then, this uh, second um, Niger Bridge has been uh, launched as well. What is the name I'm going to use? Inauguration or whatever. The president opened it officially yesterday. While I was passing through that axis, I didn't see much activities like something that the president uh, has come to inaugurate or to open and all that. We understand that he did it virtually. And one quarter of the bridge, the first Niger Bridge, now that we will know it as first Niger Bridge, the other one may be known by, like, um, by the name of uh, President Buhari Bridge. I don't know because they Eastern governors have decided to name that after President Muhammad Buhari. How they are going to coin that uh, is a matter for another day. Um, the name they have already given may not be how they are going to put it, but definitely they have accepted or they have decided to name it um, uh, to name it President Muhammad Buhari Bridge or any other name that will be related to Buhari for that. But there was no activity on that bridge, and all I saw on that stretch of that very beautiful bridge was one truck. I, I think it was a tanker. I don't know if it was going to load uh, the vehicles of the workers or something, but it's the only thing that I saw on that road for as long as I was, I was on the first Niger Bridge. And that first Niger Bridge still had some traffic jam, at least in the quarter of that bridge uh, towards Asaba. When you're coming from Onicha and you're going to Asaba, a quarter of that bridge was was jammed and nobody could move for a, a period of time but it, at least it was better than some other times before at the second niger bridge and then i saw the the signpost uh, going into the second niger bridge and where i saw was oweri and another place uh, that was not necessarily onicha so I, I don't know how that road was made if after passing the second niger bridge and you're going towards uh, uh, where should have been on each other if the road just goes straight to Oweri or how uh, that navigation is going to uh, be done. But we do hope that it grants access to Onicha, grants access to so many other places uh, that people might want to commute. Because if it's not coming into Onicha and it's going somewhere else, it will. I have not been on that road, so I'm just, I'm just saying things without having uh, first-hand knowledge. But if it's not going into Onicha, that means people who are going to Onicha may have to use the bridge they've always used, and that will mean that the congestion will continue on the first Niger Bridge as it is. But I, we thank the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. If they didn't achieve anything else, at least for the people who commute uh, through that axis, it is a very, very welcome development. Kudos to them. And the next administration to, to do more, to open up areas and to make uh, congestions a thing of the past on our road. So it's a very commendable project that was done. A very beautiful legacy project that was done by, or has been done by the Muhammad Buhari administration. Today, we have like five days or six days to the end of this administration. In fact, uh, 29th of May, we're going to have a new president. Whether he's going to stay for the full four years tenure is another case because we've heard that a lot of things from the tribunals are coming up and we do not know if this will be the first president that will be relieved of his job or he will win the cases against him in the tribunal and continue for the next four years. Whatever it is, Nigerians just want good governance and we want things done rightly. So if the election was not done rightly, we hope that things will be corrected and we know what it is. If it was done rightly, we hope that the right person wins and continues to win and 
administers this state that we call Nigeria. Nigeria is our own. Some of us don't have two passports. We have just this one. And we're hoping to travel the world but still come back to Nigeria because we love Nigeria so much. So whoever is superintending um, over the affairs of Nigeria will have to do better than just being a president. Well, Dangote Refinery has come up. We are, we are worried, not just that, um, okay, we have a refinery that we are hoping will have jobs created for Nigerians, let's say 100,000 jobs. I'm sure it will be more than that, 100,000 uh, core jobs, and there are others that will be tied to that. We are hoping uh, that will be. But we are also worried about the fact that if a papa is giving us problems like this for so many years, will Dangote Mills not pose another problem, another papa problem on the axis of the Ekwe Road? There was no special road created because a, a refinery was coming. So the trucks that will be coming to that area will also be using the roads that we have been using and already are experience, experiencing uh, traffic jam. If you go to the Aja axis of Lagos, you will see that sometimes you may need to sleep on the road almost or you spend so many hours on the road because the, 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 the congestion is always so much. Now that the Dangote refinery has come up, are we going to see uh, even worse situation than that because if anything more than this what is happening right now will mean that so many people have will have to relocate or will lose their jobs because they cannot get to the offices on time or they cannot get home on time and all that so i hope that as we rejoice that dango team um, Dangote uh, refinery has come up, we will also have cause to rejoice that there are also going to be roads that will be open, especially because this has come. Whether there, there be roads on the land or there are going to be train uh, railways uh, opened to that point, or there's going to be uh, water transportation that will take people to and fro that place, well, whatever is going to happen, let there be more roads for the people. Let not all of us use the same road as we're using right now because it's bad as it is and we don't want it to be worse. Well, a lot of people have said that uh, uh, the fuel will come down and uh, the, the, the shortages will no longer be there. We like that. That's very good. Let's hope that that happens. Let's also hope that the federal government was not just waiting for an individual to do this so that they put their arms where they shouldn't be. Just fold their arms and look and say, okay, this person has done this. I hope that they are going to open up that industry or that section of our economy for more people to invest in it and also uh, make sure that the government refineries are put in place so that there can, they can be competition. Because if there's no competition, then it means that whatever Dangote decides, that's what the Nigerian populace will take. We'll also uh, have this story about Sheon Kuti. Sheon Kuti, the Afrobeat uh, musician, has been released on bail. He has met all his uh, bail conditions, so now he has been released. Before the release, a lot of people, or some people, went to, to protest, and they were talking about, they were, they were, they were shouting words like, uh, free Sheon, uh, free Sheon Kuti, and so many other things that they were talking about. They wanted Sheon to be freed, and... That's the clip right there you're, you're watching, how people were protesting and uh, calling for the release of Sheo. Okay, so having met his bail conditions, he's been released, and we're, I think today he's going to uh, go back to the courts so that they... The hearing will continue, and whatever is going to be decided will bring you the information later on uh, in the course of uh, the, um, the broadcast for today, maybe in our news or in any other program, maybe on uh, um, Tea Time, which is an entertainment program, or the major news, or any other program on Plus TV. But be sure that we are going to uh, put our ears to the ground and make sure whatever happens in that case, you will be the first to hear, if possible. Then uh, Peter O.B. and Labour Party to present joint petition in three weeks. Um, a lot of things will happen on the 30th of May. That is the day after the inauguration, a day after swearing in of the president-elect, whose election is being um, contested right now. But in three weeks, we're hoping that a lot of things will be done. Um, 
Peter Obi had asked for seven weeks, um, a time which he wanted to use to bring all his petitions against Tinubu to the front, uh, to explain them, to, 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 to produce his evidences and all that. But now it's three weeks that has been given to them. We do hope that a lot can be achieved in these three weeks. Uh, we've always been crying in Nigeria. Now, we do not like a situation where cases keep dragging and dragging and dragging until um, uh, some, some, sometimes we never hear the last of it until whoever is involved gets away with anything that he is uh, being accused of. For instance, now, we still have a case against the frontliners uh, for the Senate presidency. Uh, Goswila Pabio has a case with the EFCC and uh, they are in the courts. Uh, we have Yari. Yari also has a case with the EFCC and they are in the courts. We even have uh, someone who normally for laymen like us will, will think he's an ex is a convict, not even an ex-convict because the uh, former governor of Abia State was in jail but was released on technicalities, not that whatever he was accused of um, he was now uh, free of the charges and all that, but because of technicalities of filing the, the cases, he was set free. And he's now in the, in the Senate, angling for the position of the Senate president, and we do not know how that is going to happen. And so his case will continue like that while he sits in the president's and make, uh, Senate well, he sits in the Senate and makes laws for the rest of Nigerians. And maybe after his tenure, if he's found guilty again, or the filing of the case is done properly and he goes back to jail, he has used four years to make laws for the rest of us to obey because we should be law-abiding uh, citizens. So if trials, if uh, cases in court and everything were done uh, swiftly and uh, and in a way that is transparent enough, and whoever needs to go to jail goes to jail, whoever needs to stay back stays back, then we'll know that a lot of uh, things will not come up. We would not be talking about the Ojus or Kalos of this world, we will not be talking about the Akpabios of this world, and all that. In fact, we hear um, one of the things that Akpabio has said when he talked about Akpabio, yeah, not Akpabio, Akpabio is a local government in Cross River State, Akpabio. Uh, Gospel Akwabio has said is that he should not be judged if he is contesting for the Senate presidency. He should not be judged by what happened uh, during his time as the Niger Delta, the man in charge of the Niger Delta affairs, the, the minister in charge of Niger Delta. He should be judged for his about 30 years of being a lawyer. He should be judged in his years as a governor. He should be judged in so many other things, but not being a minister of the Niger Delta Affairs. And I was asking myself, Niger Delta Affairs, that's, that was like one of the most recent portfolios you have held. Is it that we should judge you on things that you have done a long time ago or the things that you have done now? Because they say the now is what you are, not before. We can't live on past glory. But that's not for me to judge. I'm not a senator. I'm not choosing. I'm not even part of the APC to say, okay, we have a consensus in Akwabio and all that. But I'm a Nigerian who is concerned. If you failed in one thing, which is very recent, how are we sure the thing that we're going to entrust into your hands tomorrow, you're going to do well? I'm just asking questions. I said, layman, I don't know what that is. But well, let's see how it goes. Whether the, pres the senators will elect their own principal officers or they will, elect, will let external influences be what will determine who rules them, who, who superintends over the Senate, and who uh, leads them as they make laws for the rest of us in Nigeria to obey. Presidential Tribunal merges Atiku P2B APM petitions against Tinubu fixes May 30 for hearing. I've mentioned that before, that May 30, a lot of things are going to happen. Hearing will be on May 30, a day after the inauguration of the president-elect. So the petitions of uh, Atiku and, you know, possibly by extension, the PDP, Pitaobi, and by extension, the Labour Party, APM and its uh, contestants and all that, uh, they have been merged as one. So that's what it means. So they will all cry out as one voice against what they feel was an injustice, was something that was not supposed to ever happen. But let's see how it goes. The world is watching. We are watching. The Nigerian people are watching to see what is going to happen. We do hope that 
justice will not only be done, but be seen as being done. That is what we always say all the time when we are talking. But right now, uh, we'll take a short break, look at the uh, weather, and then when we return, we'll look at the headlines, and we'll have someone who will help us dissect what uh, we see on the headlines this morning. Stay with us. <laughs> 